And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and received sight for with, and arose, and he was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened, and when Paul was all certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. 5 verse 17, what is this chapter, the first part of God? Let's have a review a little bit. The conversion of the Apostle Paul. The Damascus Road. On the Damascus Road. What was he going to do on that Damascus Road? Where was he going? Damascus. Damascus, and for what purpose? Persecute. Persecute and send them back to, to Jerusalem, harass them, bring them back, put in prison in Jerusalem. And what happened to him when he was on his way? He met the Lord. He was struck down. Struck down. That's right. He met the Lord Jesus Christ. What did the Lord say to him? Why persecutest thou me? Saul, why persecutest thou me? And uh, what was Paul's question? Who art thou? Who art thou, Lord? And what did the Lord say? I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus, Jesus I'm not uh, So, finally, what happened then after that to Saul? He was scared. Apparently, he accepted the Lord. What will have me to do? And he was willing to do what the Lord told him. What happened to his, himself? He was blinded. He was blinded. He became a believer. He became a believer. He became saved, born again, Christian. That's right. And after he became a believer, then. He stood speechless hearing the voice of the He was blinded. What do you suppose the Lord blinded him at that time? Put the fear into him. Probably put the fear so in him. Understand, you right. know, he would understand. All right. Because of trust him. What? Well, because of the trust him. Huh? Well, no man has seen God at any time, but Paul saw the Lord, and the, the, mm -hmm. the brightness of of him. Yeah, probably the kind of brightness blinded him. He was, you know, he showed himself from heaven. Now, uh, was Paul used his eyes in other ways before this? He studied. He studied. What did he study? The law. He studied the law of Moses. Who was his teacher? Gamaliel. Gamaliel. He was a very good... What was his profession or what was his denomination? He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, wasn't he? He was a Jew. And so he used his eyes. Now he can't use his eyes anymore. He's got to just trust the Lord and be helped by somebody else. So then finally, uh, the Lord told him to go to a man's name. What was the man's name? He was supposed Ananias. to go to Ananias. Go to the house. And where was Ananias? What, what house was he at? Was, uh, no, no, Ananias, no, Ananias went to, to Ananias, okay, Ananias. To, to us, went to what house? To, Saul, to uh, um, the house of Judas. Judas. House of Judas. And so Ananias was told to go because Saul was there and he wanted to help him. Was Ananias receptive to the Lord's request? He was frightened. He was frightened? He was frightened. And what else was he? He did it, but he, he, did it. he had to be persuaded. Why was he frightened? Because he heard him what Saul was doing and how he was persecuting Christians. Christians. And did the Lord know all about this? Yes. Yes. So remember last Thursday we said that uh, he was not really saying, yes, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do no matter what. Was Abraham like that same way, asking why did you send me out of my house to a land that I don't know? Of? I don't he didn't so. question the Lord. He just went. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in fact... Uh, he didn't have to meet Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but even Ananias, or rather... Uh, the, that's what much learning does. <laughs> much learning, that's right. <laughs> so the, the man that, uh, the servant of, of was it Israel? Uh, of Israel? Well, the servant of Israel, what was his name? Who? The servant of, uh, of Israel. Of Israel? Of, uh, or of Abraham? Abraham. Abraham. Oh, Abraham. Abraham. Abraham Eliezer. Abraham's servant. Eliezer. Eliezer. Yeah. Now, when he went to find a bride for Isaac, Remember, that's why he went to come back to his home and paid an error. I being in the way, the Lord led me. So he didn't question, uh, he didn't say, I can't do this. How am I going to do it? He well, went, well, Abraham says, how, how come not Eliezer? He thought he wanted Eliezer to be the one that the Lord would pick. Uh -huh. And he thought Ishmael would be the one that the Lord would pick. Mm -hmm. and so it took him a while to come around to the fact that it was going to be Isaac. Be Isaac. So then we see in verse 17, when Ananias did go to the house of Judas, and there was Saul. What happened at that time? In verse 17. I mentioned that last Thursday. Questions of bftbc.org, 856 261 918. What is it? He put his hands on him. Put his hands on him, and then what happened? Called him Saul. brother Saul. Brother Saul. Saul received thy sight. She is prepared of thee, so camest, I must receive thy sight. Notice he sent me 
the Dhamma Ministry, so he was used in Ananias to touch him, hold him, and receive his sight by that ministry, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. What did we say that meant? Filled with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Control. 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 Absolutely in control of the Spirit of God. Now, where does the Holy Spirit dwell presently? In believers. And those that are genuinely saved, where he's, are we are his temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in us, which we have if we're genuinely saved. Now, does he indwell those that are lost people? No, he does not indwell lost people at all. Or those that are saved. And then in the verse 18, when he touched him, in verse 18, that's where we start for tonight. Uh, what happened when Ananias touched Saul? Verse 18. It fell from his eyes. The uh, did, from his did it eyes. take a number of months? No. No, no. what's that word immediately mean? Right away. Right away. Uh, there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith. What does forthwith mean? Straight away. Straight away. Right away. And then what, what did he do then? He got up. He got up. He rose. Baptized. Baptized. Now, who are the candidates in the scripture for baptism? Those that have received Jesus. Those that have received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Uh, should babies be baptized according to the scripture? No, no babies, no baptism. Have to be saved. Should the people that are lost be saved? Now, what does baptism do? Does it save us? It's a symbol. It's a symbol. Does baptism save us? No. No. Doesn't deliver us. Do some churches teach a baptism yes, state? Yes. Yes. Church of Christ, different ones. Uh, just go down and you're saved. The Catholic Church also, maybe the Baptismal regeneration. Baptism regeneration. regeneration. Now the Roman Catholic Church, when they yeah. sprinkle the babies, that relieves the original sin. That's well, sort now of, they're saying uh, that's born again through baptism. No, it's uh, either the angel, but born again. Historically, it's just yeah. Adam's sin, but now it's they're born again through baptism. So but we don't believe that, but in obedience to the Lord Jesus. And what did the Great Commission say in Matthew 28? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Right, go eat all the world, preach the gospel, every creature, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe what sort of things I've taught you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So that was a command, and that's the Trinity right there, that the one. The one name singular, because of unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. And so <clears throat> this is part of, and baptism means what? To Greek immerse. Word, to immerse. It means to dip under. So we believe as, as scriptures, scriptures that we baptize every word. So he was obedient. Now, where did Saul get the idea that he was supposed to be baptized after he was saved? Where do you think he got that idea? From the Lord. Probably the Lord. And maybe Ananias told him, I don't know. But uh, it's immediate. he was immediately baptized. And then in verse 19, <clears throat> what does it mean? Maybe from Judas. Maybe from Judas, the house of Judas. He was a believer. And, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, three or four, five, six times, uh, over and over, whenever we have uh, baptismal services, we always quote those verses. He believed, was baptized. He believed, was baptized. <laughs> it's, it's constant. It's, it's regenerated people being uh, baptized by immersion after they're saved in obedience to the Lord uh, and similar to what the Lord has done for them in their salvation. What happened in that verse 18 after he was uh, verse 2 and verse 19? What did he do that after his baptism? He ate. He ate. Received me. He ate. And what else? Strengthened. Strengthened. Now, mm -hmm. yes, Anna? Well, there was a, wasn't there a question in one of these classes recently about whether or not Paul was baptized. We have our answer here. Was oh, that somebody totally can, mixed up with someone? One of the questions was asked, was Paul oh, baptized? I think, I think maybe Jack asked that. Oh. Did Jack yeah. ask that? So we, On Tuesday. On Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So we show this. Oh. Yes. We have this. That's good. That's good. Well, there's a question whether Paul was baptized. Paul was baptized, yes. Okay. Yes, he was. As soon as he was saved, he was born again, then he was baptized in obedience to the Lord. Receive meat, then now why do you think you mentioned here he received meat? What does that imply? He was hungry. He was hungry and probably, he was for probably his had days. probably hadn't had much to eat. He was blind and he was just taken he was in. Trying to take, take, take in what happened to him. The whole thing, the whole Damascus Road experience, he was trying to process it. Mm -hmm. So and then he was strengthened. <laughs> What's that? The Bible 
I had my Bible open it and it fell onto the lever and then it moved the camera while the camera was selected. Oh, okay, well that's good, I'm glad the camera knew what it was doing. So uh, he received, he was strengthened. Now, does all food strengthen us? No. No. But apparently this food strengthens us. I guess him. if he hadn't eaten for three days, probably anything would. Anything was straight. So he was... Be better bites. than nothing. Huh? Yeah, even the light bites. So the strength and, <laughs> strength and is important. Uh, and then uh, what did Saul do uh, there in Damascus in verse 19? He was strengthened. He strengthened. And then what? He spent some certain number of days with the disciples. Okay. Uh, what are disciples? What does it mean you're the disciples? The learners. The learners? The believers. The believers, saved Christian people. Uh, at Damascus. And then, uh, that was what, we stopped there at that verse, didn't we? 17, 18, 19. All right, let's read verse 20, 21, 22 to you. And the straight way we preach Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem, and came hither from that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more strength, strength and, and confounded the Jews, Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Christ. All right, uh, verse, wow. uh, verse 20. What does straightway again mean? Immediately. Immediately. What did he do when he was at Damascus? He preached Christ. Preached Christ. What does that mean, to preach Christ? He shared the gospel. All right. Told about the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did at the cross of Calvary, that he died for the sins of the world and their sins. And then... Uh, uh, it says that he preached Christ what? <coughs> in the synagogue. That's what. What were the synagogues? What did happen what there? The Jews. When the Jews, Jews met. Uh, does that mean he was a Jew again? No. No, he, he left that. He was a Christian. Why did he go to the synagogue? That's where the people were. That's where the people were. The Jews were. And, uh, Wait, weren't the Christians there? Tell people about the Messiah. Right? About the Messiah. Yes. That's right. What does synagogue mean in the Greek? Soon. Together. With. Yeah. I go. To lead, so leading together. See, that's the leading together. A place where they gather, a gathering place. And uh, the Jews were there, probably Gentiles as well. Yes, huh? The synagogue was not the temple. Oh, no. Oh. So uh, the synagogue was a place where they all met and they talked mm -hmm. when they wanted to. Like, How many males had to be before they could start a synagogue? Ten, I think. Ten Jews had to have be ten Jews yes. in the place so they could have a synagogue. And so that's the way the synagogue go. That's what it is, the synagogue. And uh, he preached Christ. And uh, what did they what did they say about him in verse twenty, the last part of verse twenty? That he, they preached that he was the son of God. What does it mean that Christ was the Son of God? Right. His deity. His deity is there. Uh, was he just a man? No. Do some people believe he was just a man? Yes. He was part of the Trinity. Part of the Trinity. So he's the Son of God. He was God the Son, as well as God the Son of Man, perfect God, perfect man. How did he become the Son of Man? How did he come? Perfect man. He was born of a virgin. Born of a virgin. Incarnation. That was necessary. Otherwise, he couldn't be deity as well as perfect humanity. And so he was. He preached that he was the son of God. Did the Jews believe he was the son of God? No. No, no they didn't. No. So a lot of people. A lot of people today, and even the churches, the preachers, do they believe he was the son of God? No. Some pastors do not. They just say he was just a human being and. But he preached that he was a son of God. Now, uh, how did he figure that? Before, he, as he was approaching Damascus, spread to imprison Christians, did he then believe he was the son of God? He met him on Damascus Road. But uh, before he got and met him, did, as he was no. going to no. Damascus, did he believe Jesus Christ was the son of God? No. No. Oh, what no con not on his way. Yeah, not, not on his way, see. But what convinced him? When he was struck down. struck down, and he was blinded. Blinded. And the light. He was actually hearing him talk. He heard him talk, and he, he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And personal. Personally. In three days, it changed everything. Yeah. That's exactly right. Now the thing about it is, uh, if he were not the Son of God, perfect God, perfect man, how could it be up in heaven? How could it be talking? See, how could he be alive? He, he, they crucified him. He was dead and buried. But he had to be resurrected there he was. And then he was convinced the son of God. And you got something? Yeah, I got something. Let me okay, see. Go ahead. So, so, uh, this whole uh, 
Uh, dear Pastor Waite, hello and good evening to everyone at Bible Day. Thank you for tonight's Bible study and also for keeping our son Joe in prayer. From Joe and Norma Fossey in California. Good, let's wave to Joe Norma. Way over California. Thank you, Joe Norma. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'd like an update on, on his son. How old he is now? Yeah, how old is, uh, is Joe? You might ask him. Uh, we, we'll ask you. Uh, Joe, how old is your son? We, we, I think he's but, maybe 20 or something. Maybe 20? What year in college is he in? What year in college? Yeah, 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 Dave, you had some it's sophomore junior. Maybe. It's amazing how, uh, how this soon he knew so much. Yes. Good theology, good right. doctrine. Exactly. I mean, right away, he That's knew it. it. He knew it. That's right, it's amazing. God revealed that to him, didn't he? And he was a sound preacher and doctrinal man all the way through. Yeah, what? Everything he had preached against Jesus, mm -hmm. when he got saved, he knew that was the truth. And he so he, had, he knew what the truth was. All right. he, he, he believed, didn't he? Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing for the he heart. He had to preach the truth because he was the opposite of what he'd been condemning. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wrote a good portion of the uh, Bible, too. Yes, he did. Paul did most of it. 13, 14 books out of the 27. That's quite a few, isn't it? New uh, Testament. Good percent in the New Testament. That's right. So, uh, and then in verse number 21, what was the reaction of those that heard this man saw preaching? What does it mean? What does it mean, it's amazed? Surprised. Surprised? Shocked. Shocked? Bewildered? All those words? Uh, why do you suppose they were so amazed? Because, because of the way he was before. The way he was before. He was a head persecutor. What was his reputation before? He was a oh, he was persecutor, murder, he was very bad, cruel. And so they were amazed. It's amazing. Just like, now is God still able to save sinners that are lost and undone yes. and yes. bad? And, yes, he's able to save them. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, uh, transforming them as he did the Apostle Paul or so. When, so, amazed. And what was their question? when they were amazed in verse 21. What did they question? That, that, that he had all, had brought people and, and he wanted to kill them and uh -huh. everything. And, yes. and here he was preaching the gospel. Yes. Is this Saul? Is this the one that destroyed them was called in his name? Destroyed. That indicates death, doesn't it? As well as imprisonment. So, uh, yes, they had a question in their mind if it was really he. Yeah, they wondered, is this the same one? See, they weren't sure. Because how could it be, see? Mm -hmm. Such a revolutionary change in his life. They'd and never seen a picture of him. You know, no, that's right. Like but but uh, they knew him by name, I suppose. By name. Because he and, would have had a big reputation. Uh, and then came hither for that intent. What does intent mean? Purpose. That purpose. Came hither. What's hither mean? There. Here. Well, thither is there. Here. Hither is here. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm wondering if, as far as you know, before... There are the heavy, even in our early history, or play, whatever you want to say, 100, 100, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, before the advent of, I mean, there were still pictures and so forth, but when, for say, for example, Abraham Lincoln went someplace, I mean, they, people didn't know, they probably knew he was the president, or they knew he was running for president, but they didn't really know who, well, they just by the name. So I think by the name Paul, mm -hmm. They, or, pardon, thank you. By the name Saul, they they would they would know. Oh, wait a minute. There's a Saul that's this this persecutor, and you know I, they they would know somehow, mm -hmm. just like we they, we know somehow who people are. Mm -hmm. But even even without pictures, just the name, we can think, we can think of people's names that we've been exposed to mm -hmm. in, in the course of our lives. That whether with or without picture, with or without a picture. There, those names and those personalities, those people mean something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Now for a little Elizabethan language instruction. Hence, fence. Hither, thither. Now what do those two words mean? Let's start with hence and thence. What are those? Hence what, is off what took a place right after? Okay, hence and thence. Now, hence is from here. Thence is from there. Fence, hence and thence. What about hither and thither? To and fro. That's right. To, hither is to here, and thither is to there. To there. The hither, the th see, from and the to. So that's it. interesting. That's where, um, when Lot was going to um, Zor, i got to find it here, it's, the Lord said to him, hither, he used the word hither. 
Yes, yeah, should I go hither? Here. To here? To there? To here? See? He said, come hither. Come hither. Come, come to here. here. Which, which, which indicated that I had to find this serum this way back earlier. Now, there's, there's another phrase we use now, hither, thither, and yon. What does that mean? Hither, thither, and yon. Yon is over there. <laughs> so people say, that, where, where is that person? Well, I don't know. Hither, thither, and yon. We don't know where they're. Anywhere. <laughs> to there, to, to here, from here. Right, Dan, you find that? It's in chapter 19 someplace. Or, um, here, uh, verse... Uh, Maybe this is 1922, or getting back to verse 21. And he said, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything until thou become thither. Therefore, Skip. the name of the city is called Zoar. It's thither, from here, from there, see, from there. From and can't, uh, no, no, hither would be too. To here, but thither is from there. Escape from there. See thither. From there. Hither, so hither is to there, and thither is from there. From there. Okay, to so and from. Maybe it's later on in the chapter, but I'm thinking of haste. Well, that's, that's you've got a good escape word. Escape thither, for I cannot do anything until thou become. Escape from here. Come, escape from here. Become thither. Become thither. Until you come from here. Yes, from Therefore, from the there. name of the city is called Zoar. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a little bit. Dance, but yeah, Anna. That's good. I have something sort of off topic. Okay. But it got me thinking about it. It was um, in Genesis 7, verse 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen to be righteous before me in this generation. It says, Come into the ark, not mm -hmm. go into the ark. That's right. Which meant that the Lord was going to be there with them. That's right. Very good. He's right there with us. Come. He's right there. Come to me. Here's it. Here's it again. Verse 20. Okay. Go right there. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is that little one, and my soul shall live. Thither. Okay. From there. All um, right. He wanted to go there. Yes. I would say to, toward the place. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't know. All right. Okay. Um, I have a comment about um, how they would have recognized him, perhaps, uh -huh. because he they know they knew he was an excellent teacher, mm -hmm. and so he would have been standing there teaching in this same manner, perhaps mm -hmm. that he you know I mean they maybe had never heard him before, but they had heard of him perhaps a, a word about him mm -hmm. or a reputation about him. And so they knew he wasn't just an ordinary teacher. And so mm -hmm. it could also be the way he taught. The way he taught. He could have recognized the way he taught, absolutely. So they're amazed. He comes thither, uh, hither to that intent. He might bring them bound with the deep priest. So and then in verse 22, what happened to Saul as he was in the Damascus for a while? Questions of BFTBC.org or 856-261. 9018. Give us a call or email. Glad to hear from you. Have something there? Uh, Joseph Sage. Oh, good. Um, Joseph Sage. Pastor Wade. Oh, our son. She's going away. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can hold the question until she comes back. She asked the question. Well, we could repeat it for her. Okay. Dear Pastor Wade, our son Joseph is 19 years old. Good. He's in his second year in college. He attends Cal Poly St. Louis. Uh, San, San Louis. San Louis. Mm hmm. Uh, of Pisipo, California. Well, good. 19, so we'll tell her mom when she comes in. All right, uh, what happened in verse 22? Yeah, Anna. We have to wave again. Oh, let's wave again to, to California, to, to uh, Joe, Joe and Norman Fasci, Joe and Norman Fasci. All right, uh, so what happened in verse 22 uh, as he was there in Damascus? There was growth. There was growth. Saw increased, increased the war in strength, and that's what a person has to do. That's right. To when they're discipled, right, is you have to teach. Yes. The word and increase. What does Philippians four thirteen say? I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if Paul was strengthened, Saul was strengthened. The things of the Lord, physically I'm sure, but also the things of the Lord. And what did you, what did you do there, but to the Jews in verse twenty two? He taught them. He proved right. confused them that, that Jesus is, was the Christ. All right, what does confounded mean? 
I just couldn't believe what they were hearing. Because he was a guy that was totally, uh, you know, uh, a persecutor and turns yeah. around and did a 180. And 180. That's right. like, you know, somebody you know that was one way and just turned yeah. out to be totally opposite. Young Joe was 19, man. Young Joe Foster was 19. Okay. Yes, the confounded, in other words, confounded sense of uh, confusion, maybe? What else? It'd be like if President Obama became a, a very conservative Republican. That would be really, <laughs> <laughs> that would be really confusing. I wouldn't believe myself. What, what is that? What did you say <laughs> about <laughs> confounded? For him, he, he was uh, able to argue. Going after he argue. He would argue the Book of Word, the Word of God, mm -hmm. and the. Uh, the uh, confound the Jews, which are Jews. What did he prove to the Jews? What did he try to prove? Jesus, Jesus was the very Christ. What does Christ mean? Anointed one. Anointed one. Uh, what's the Messiah. Hebrew for it? Messiah. Messiah is anointed. Christos is anointed. So the very Christ. What does this signify? If he proved to the Jews that the Lord Jesus is their Messiah, their Christ, what does that mean for the Jews? They crucified him. They crucified the Lord of glory. But also, he's the coming one that was promised in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. He's the one that God sent to be their Savior. And uh, yeah. so that was amazing for the Jews. All right, we're going to stop right here. Unless you want to go three more verses. What do you think? We'll go three more. How about three? Uh, verse 23, 4, and 5. Let's read those. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But they're laying wait with sins with the Lord Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. And the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in the basket. Verse 23, after many days were fulfilled. How long do you think he was there at Damascus? Many days. What would be a guess? Maybe 60 days. Maybe 60 days, 30 days, 60 days. No, there were many days. What was he doing during that time? Sleeping? Teaching. Teaching. Gone to Bible school. Bible school. The Lord was teaching him and he was teaching others. He was proving. When did he go to the backside of the desert? That was after this. Yeah, after this. Yeah. But, Oh, we got something here. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, Rob from Chicago. Go ahead, Rob. That's answer. And I'm going to say, I read about two. We made acquaintance about eight years ago. Rob Winograd from Chicago. Rob Winograd from Chicago. He met you a long time ago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's right. Rob Winograd from Chicago. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting, too, that um, when Philip preached to the Okay, Rob, let's, let's wave the right to Rob and say hello to him. Uh, Rob from Chicago, thank you very much for the call. He met you about years ago, see, Rob Winograd. Maybe you don't remember him, but... I think I do remember. Yeah, he was short, not too tall, and uh, he, he came to visit. All right, so uh, many days were filled. We don't know, 20 days, 30 days. Uh, what happened after he was there many days? In verse 23. The Jews wanted to kill him, sleep. Why I guess they looked at him as a traitor or something. Maybe. Because he was convincing the people that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Uh, did the Jews want other people, other Jews, to be converted? No. No, no they didn't. No. See, here was Saul. He was converted, but didn't want others. So the council took counsel. What's that mean? They, they, they had a little uh, yeah, committee meeting. Committee meeting. Committee, they, they took that they, <laughs> Among themselves, they planned and plotted how to kill that man. Secretly. Secretly. But they're, in verse number 24, they're laying awake. They Did were they know about this? As he went home or something about the gates. Did they know about this? Who's the they? Did people that were friends of Saul? Yes. yes. They are laying awake, was known. Uh, and so. They protected him. They protected him. Now. What is it, who's the they refer to, you think, in verse 24? They watch the gates to kill him. The Jews. The, the Jews. Jews. Why do they watch the gates, you think? They want to kill him. Capture him. Capture him. And what, might, what, what do we know about uh, Damascus? Probably like other cities. What might the walls. The wall all around. Now, they wouldn't it's expect him to go to the wall for the wall, but they expect him to go through the gate, right? Probably. Waiting for him to go. Waiting to kill him. Yeah, Might have been time for him to go back home, and so they knew sort of what it would be, so they were standing there waiting for him. Yes, watching. When they, what were they going to do when they went through that kill gate? Him. Going to kill him. 
And so they waited and watched. Uh, that's what Paul did to the Christians. Yes, that's right. Same now, thing. Did they watch only during the daytime? Nighttime, day and night. Day and night. Well, they must have had a contingent. They must have had a rotation. They must have had some sleep and somebody else take over and so on. They put some on watch in the day, some on watch at night uh, to kill them. That was their purpose. Uh, what horrible murder. That's what the ISIS people are doing now, isn't it? These, mm -hmm. these uh, mm -hmm. Islamic terrorists killing hundreds and thousands every single day mm -hmm. over there. It's a terrible thing. Murder, murder, murder. Then in verse uh, 28 and 25, uh, what did these disciples then do? They took him by night. By night? Why do you think it was by night? So no one would see him. No one would see him. And see what did they do then? They put them in a basket. The wall. By the wall. In, the back. in other words, were the Jews guarding the wall no. day and night? No. Just the, the gates. Just the gates. Yes. Uh, Anna. If they had them down in a basket by day, it might have got attracted more attention. That's like true. It's just a basket going down over the That's wall. That's exactly right. <laughs> but, but at night time, it would have been harder to see the basket going down the wall. That's right. exactly right. And I've always said many times, some people refer to Paul as a basket piece. You know what that means. Right? <laughs> a basket. Yeah, I know. He's in, he's a, in a basket. basket. He was not a basket case. He was full, strengthened for the Lord, saved, born again, a Christian preaching Christ to the Jews. All right, well, he escaped out of their hands, didn't he? Escaped out of their hands. Any other comments? We'll stop here. Pick it up, Lord willing, next Thursday. Who's well, seen a basket that big? <laughs> that's a big basket, wasn't it? Yeah. Big basket. Uh, but uh, uh, people use baskets even today for dogs and cats as they go on a, a ship or something, a boat. And some cattle or horses, they put them under that and just hoist them up. And a little different. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions though, before we close tonight? Mm -hmm. All right, if not, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, How many of the uh, disciples were there that did that? Well, uh, this, I don't know. It doesn't say how many were there in Damascus, but uh, there was more than 12. two or more, see, disciples. Yeah. Might be just followers. Uh, well, that's true. The, the, these were followers. I don't think they're one of the twelve disciples or ten or eleven or whatever. What's Anna? They were in Jerusalem, the eleven. Yeah, they were in Jerusalem. This was in Damascus. See, so it wouldn't be the disciples. That the Lord chose these apostles. Right. Uh, but disciples means followers, or see, he, Christians. He, learners. Christians, learners. Uh, the twelve they called apostles, special apostles. Right. Oh, that's and, good. Yeah. So these disciples were just. No, followers. Yeah, followers, yeah. Followers. And, and learners and uh, Christian people, yes. It's David. amazing how soon he came under per severe persecution. Yes, it is. It's amazing. Yes. A and it can happen uh, to Christians today. Absolutely. Especially, in Especially when you argue lands. with atheists. That's right. That's right. Atheists and Muslim yeah, lands and even in our lands today. Uh, right, yeah, Christian uh, persecution. I got mad at how my not? wife made that mad at him the other day. <laughs> For instance, we just heard today on the news, one of the colleges, I forget the name of it, uh, was going to have a call to prayer, Muslim call to prayer. Uh, Duke. Duke, Duke University, see, which is subsidized by the United States government, different things, other things. And uh, Franklin Graham, we don't necessarily go 100% with everything, but he was objected to it. He got really up in arms, and so they, they stopped it. Can you imagine a Muslim call to prayer at a mm. university that's subsidized by the government? Mm. So they stopped it. But uh, people today do not like Bible-believing Christians. Well, who's strong. calling for the prayer? Uh, the, the Duke University people, apparently, are calling for a prayer. Some of the students? Some of the students, I guess, and the faculty. To they're trying to be welcome to all the Muslims. But you see, are Muslims just another religion? No. What does this no, What does it say in the Quran? What they're to do? Kill, kill, kill yeah, Jews, kill Christians, kill all all infidels that are not Muslim. That's right. Yeah, Especially those that are not solid Islamic people, Muslims. Kill those too. They kill their own Muslims, don't they? They're not really strong for them. At, at them. It, it must have been the administration that was calling for. Oh yes. Them. Otherwise, if it was just the students, I mean, that would have been just freedom of speech. Right. They would have been permitted to do that, yeah. but. Um, it's different if it was the administration that was calling for it. Mm -hmm. When well. they restrict, uh, you know, Christians from praying, mm -hmm. if they're, you know, valedictorian or something, they were not permitted to, to use the Lord's name. And mm -hmm. it's in the so news as, as you say, Dave, the Christians today are persecuted and really stomped upon if they're Bible-believing, saved Christians are preaching the gospel. 
Uh, we used to be able to preach on the street corner and evangelize. Now, in some cities, some cities you can't. They arrest you for preaching Christ. We used to, when we were just young Christians, young 17, 18 year olds, my wife and I would go down in Brea, Ohio, to the triangle. We had a triangle there, and every was a Friday night. Mm -hmm. you know, we'd preach, Pastor, we'd sing. Pastor Nick, our pastor would take us, we'd sing, we'd preach the gospel with an amplified system. No problem. They didn't arrest us. But today, <laughs> you'd be so persecution. And Paul, as you said, I think gave. We had a permit. Well, we had a permit, I'm sure, but you can't even get permits anymore, I'm sure. I don't know. We haven't tried. We haven't tried. <laughs> but in many we places. We should go on Saturday down when they have the, the thing in Collinsville and we can get a microphone. Yeah. We many places uh, have restricted uh, preaching yeah. on the streets anymore in these days. All right, let's close then with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank thee for the Apostle Paul. We thank thee for thy miracle, thy grace in saving this reprobate, this terrible murderer, those that would jail believers. How did save? Saul, why do you persecute me? Because he was persecuting the ones that were genuinely saved. We're glad, Lord, that thou hast opened the heart of this uh, Saul. And he could ask and call him Lord. He accepted him as his Lord. Why? What, who art thou? What wilt thou have me to do? And we thank thee, Lord, that he was willing to serve thee. Help us who are genuinely saved to ask the same question, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Help us to do what thou dost want us to do, as thou hast told us in thy words. Make us faithful, as Paul was faithful. And, uh, even though they went to kill him, we're glad for these disciples that saved him by letting him down in the wall instead of through the gate in a basket. Help us, Lord, as we bring back on the Lord's Day. May it be a blessed time for us here as we preach thy word and sing the songs of faith. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you for coming.